God is good all the time. Thank you for worshiping with Monumental United Methodist Church in Old Town Portsmouth. My name is Celeste Heath and I'm the pastor here at Monumental. We're honored and thankful that you chose to worship with us today. Monumental's ministry is ongoing in our community and around the world because of your generous gifts. Thank you for your gifts through our website, through your online banking bill pay option, or through the mail. Questions Jesus Asked is the summer book study for July and August. If you're interested in participating in this study, it will be offered in person on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. and on Zoom at 7 p.m. The study begins this week on July 5th. Please contact me if you would like to participate in this book study. Monumental will celebrate Christmas in July on July 30th. We have an advent calendar for collecting food and hygiene items for Oasis, and we'll have a potluck supper in the evening with some Christmas entertainment. All are invited to participate in gathering supplies for Oasis and come for our potluck supper. Thank you to those who help make this online service possible. Ellen Comstock is our liturgist, Chris Titko is our musician, Ray Comstock is our videographer and editor, and Bonnie White puts it all together and posts it online. Today we will reflect on what it means to welcome all to Christ's table. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and receive the blessings of our loving and merciful God. Will you join me in our call to worship? We have gathered to rejoice in our oneness in Christ Jesus. Each of us experiences faith and life in a unique way. Yet we have one God, one faith, one baptism, and one spirit who unites us all. Let us lift our hearts as one in songs of praise, in prayer, and in listening for God's word. And when we leave this place, let us be joined in our care for one another and God's people everywhere as Jesus cared for the stranger and the friend. Let us sing together, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. If you have a hymnal at home, it is on page 89.
pray with me? Merciful God, we confess that though we claim to love you, our lives do not always reflect that love. We offer hospitality out of obligation instead of love, out of care for our own well-being instead of that of others. We hesitate to welcome others out of fear of rejection instead of extending compassion as the fruit of your love for us. In our relationships at work, home, and even church, too often we choose expediency instead of integrity, believing the ends justify the means. Help us, we pray. Free us to live as your children who welcome, nurture, and love our neighbors as we learn to grow as disciples of Christ. Amen. As we begin our prayer time this morning, let us sing together, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. remember the founding of our country. We came from all places and all peoples to gather here today. Some of us traveled across the ice, others came later in boats, still others of us waded rivers and arrived in plains. We found a land blessed with mountains and valleys, rivers and oceans, fertile earth, wonderful woods and promising cities. Here a dream was born a dream of freedom from all oppression, a dream of hope for our children, a dream of people in community under God. We have turned to nations and peoples who gave us birth and said, send us the voiceless, send us the fearful, send us the oppressed. And now we fear that we have been too welcoming and have opened our borders too wide. We cannot control the dreams of those around us. We fear that freedoms are becoming limited and that our world will not continue to support the diversity of animal and plant life because of climate change. In this anxious time, in this time when we are bombarded with the cruel rhetoric of division, how can we be able to be healers and voices for justice when we do not see a way clear in our world, in our nation, and in our churches. Give us glimmers of hope, knowing that we can depend on you even when things seem the darkest. We pray for Methodist pastors beginning new appointments, for Court Street Baptists seeking a new pastor, for people who mourn the death of loved ones who died in war, those who have stood up for what is right and good, for those who have died in desperate and tragic circumstances, and for those whose lives were, that were ended prematurely by violence and disease. We pray for those who are ill, suffering in body and mind and spirit, and this day we pray for all that is carried in our hearts but not spoken aloud. We offer to you ourselves this day that you would shape us fully into the people that you've called us to be. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus, our Savior, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of those little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty God, teach us to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to your word today, but also to our sisters and brothers who surround us and who are in need of your grace and mercy, that we may be welcoming to all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, in our scripture from Matthew, the disciples are about to go on a mission. They're going to share the gospel message by casting out unclean spirits and curing every disease and sickness. That is a tall order. They're going to need serious provisions for something like this. But Jesus has instructed them to go out with only the clothes on their back. That, that's it. No extra tunic, no money, no food. The only thing they have to re rely on is the kindness of strangers. Hospitality is their only provision. Jesus sees hospitality as central to our discipleship. Everyone is thirsty for grace. And as the church, we are in the thirst quenching business. Behind Jesus' instructions to the disciples is a lesson for us all. Hospitality is crucial to the advancement of forgiving and healing, of justice and mercy, and of righteousness and hope. Perhaps we've never thought about how theologically vital hospitality is to the Christian life, of how hospitality defines us as Christians. If there is no hospitality, there's no gospel message. Jesus makes everyone welcome at the table. And this is the good news. Siobhan Garrigan, a theologian at Yale Divinity School, tells a story of her travels to Ireland while doing research on a book. When Siobhan arrived at a Presbyterian church in Northern Ireland, she was pleased to be greeted at the door by two women who appeared to be greeters or ushers. They engaged her in conversation and asked her name. Siobhan observed them also ask others who seemed to be new to worship there. After watching them talk with people, Siobhan figured out what they were actually doing. When they heard a newcomer's name, they would make a decision about the cultural and religious identity of that person. Those who appeared to have Protestant names were welcomed warmly and shown to their seats. Those who seemed to have Catholic names, such as Maria, Catherine, or Patrick, were told they were surely in the wrong church and were pointed to the door. This church continues this practice today. The animosity between Protestants and Catholics in Ireland seems foreign to us. We don't understand this conflict. And it's easy for us to think that we are nothing like that. We see ourselves as being beyond that kind of exclusion. Our self-image says that in our worship community, everyone is welcome. If we're honest, though, we would have to confess that we all have some boundaries in our church. However, those boundaries are not like being Catholic or Protestant. Our boundaries are different and most of the time they're more subtle. Our churches in America don't usually turn anyone away, but we look for people who are more like us. We may pride ourselves in welcoming Catholics, but what about the poor? What about 
the homeless or others who may be on the margins of society. Some churches are inclined to be more welcoming to those of a certain educational level or maybe even an economic status. And others may welcome those of a certain political bent. Some open doors wide to a defined family model or a sexual identity. The gospel calls us to be aware of the kind of welcome that we offer to all God's children. Are we living in the image of Christ and inviting all to the table? Christian hospitality is more than just being friendly. It's about being accepting and open. It's about including others in our circle and in our church and mostly in our lives. It frees us to offer a cup of cold water or a place at the table to someone who might be in a situation that is completely foreign to our own experience. Someone in a world that is outside our limited understanding. And when we are brought into a relationship with one another by the bond that hospitality creates, there's no more host and guest. There's no more insider and outsider. There's only a space in which we listen to and learn from one another. At Christ's table, we value and honor one another until all the uneven ground on which we stand becomes level and the rough places are made a plain. True Christian hospitality is crucial to the gospel message. As those with the heart and mind of Christ, we are to see others, even those not like us, or those who are new to us, as beloved children of God. When we're able to give everyone a place at the table, then we can be about the mission of sharing the good news of forgiveness and healing, the good news of justice and mercy, and the good news of righteousness and hope. Jesus speaks about how, when we welcome the least of these who are members of his family, we in fact welcome him. In the book Making Room, Pamela Buck and Christine Pohl write that the most vulnerable strangers are those people who are disconnected from relationships with family, church, economy, and civic communi community. Well, if the least of these in God's family are cut off from the worldly family, from church, from the economy, and from civic community, who in our society is Jesus telling us to welcome? Who is Jesus telling us to listen to and to learn from so that the gospel message would be shared and God's kingdom would grow? Is our table open to the soldier who is back home from war and now suffers from depression and post-traumatic stress disorder? Is our table open to the teenager whose parents kicked her out of the house when they discovered she was transgender or sexually active? Is our table open to the immigrants in our midst? When we open our church, our table, and our love to others, we may realize that each of us is loved equally by God and that each of us is crucial to God's kingdom of forgiveness and healing and justice and mercy and righteousness and hope. Jesus insists that although we might pretend otherwise, we are not the gatekeepers of the community of God. That is not our job. Our work is to welcome to offer an embrace when an embrace is invited, and to offer a place at Christ's table. For everyone born, there is a place at Christ's table.
a shelter, a space, a safe place for growing, for everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy.
Amen. Let us close our worship today by singing together, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. If you have a faith we sing at home, it's on 2191. that all may see us as the hands and feet of Christ, welcoming them to God's grace, mercy, and love. Now go in peace, and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.